This is Janet from foodplusfreedom.com. Welcome to our podcast, April 23rd, 2024. This is episode 28, Mindset, Raising, Harvesting, and Butchering Your Own Food. Can you do it? From a mindset point, can you do it? That is the question, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Make sure you like and subscribe and follow our videos and podcasts wherever you listen to or watch this podcast. Make sure you follow us on social media. All the details to where we are on social media are in the description below. And make sure you go to foodplusfreedom.com, sign up for our updates so you never miss any information. We add articles and videos plus this podcast every single week giving you more information on the realities of homesteading and food freedom. We're giving you solutions because it can be done no matter how old you are and no matter where you live or how much land you have, there is always a way to do at least a little bit. Let's get on with today's show. So mindset, here's my question. Can you, are you able to raise your own food? And I'm not talking about, do you have enough land? Are you able mentally to raise your own food? Are you mentally able, for instance, to raise a chicken? And I know a lot of people who can raise a chicken. They love their eggs. There isn't a problem with raising their chicken. They do it. Next part is, can you, are you able to mentally harvest that food you're raising? So if you get back to that chicken, are you able to harvest it and process it? Are you able to take that chicken from a living creature to your freezer? You know, mentally are you? And the next part of it is, can you, are you able to butcher the chicken as in cutting up into parts and pieces, gutting it, and getting it ready to be processed to go in your freezer or canning or whatever you're gonna do to store it. These are all sections of going from, we'll use a chicken example, from incubating an egg all the way to having it in your freezer or canning it, whatever your choice is for stocking. We're going to dive into each one of these bit by bit. So let's start with some reasons I have heard why people can't and they believe they're not able to go from starting with the animal to finishing it. And we're going to use a chicken as an example because it's one of the easiest animals to grow. You don't really need land. You can do it in the backyard. You just have to figure out the rules for your area. You could use this same type of mindset situation with a rabbit, and anybody can grow a rabbit, even in an apartment. You just have to make sure you clean it up and keep it non-smelly because rabbits are not considered livestock. You can do the same thing with quail. They're a little bit more chatty, but you can do it. So these are the reasons I've heard why people think they can't. One, I don't want to eat my friends. <laughs> Two, um, I'm not able to actually kill the animal. Well, we're not going to think of it that. We're thinking of it as harvesting. We're using different words, and it may be semantical, but in society we've been brought up that thou shall not kill. And we don't. We harvest. It's different. Because when you harvest, it is the prayerfulness and mindfulness of taking an animal that you have raised in a mindful, clean manner and giving it the best life it can until it's time for it to become your nutrition. So now it's giving you the best life you can have also. One other reason I've heard about oh, I can't, I'm not able to do that, is that I I just don't like the whole idea of blood and guts. Now, all of these answers 
they're reasonable. And if this is how you feel, this is how you feel. And I'm not here to change your mind, but I am here to hopefully open your mindset. For anyone who decides they cannot or will not, for whatever reason, harvest and butcher the food you've grown, so you feel fine growing the chickens, but you don't want to harvest them and you don't want to butcher them, that's fine. You need to find somebody who can. Now, if you're talking about rabbits and chickens, most likely you're going to have to find someone who does specifically rabbits and chickens. They're kind of clumped together for growing, raising, and, and processing under USDA. So a lot of places that do everything else, like even deer or lamb or goat or cows, they don't process chickens and they don't process um, rabbits. It just has to do with the different types of equipment they need and the rules and regulations. So with the chickens or rabbits, you need to find somebody who, who is willing to do it. And a lot of times it's word of mouth. Start with um, your local butcher, um, friends that are doing it, uh, Go to a farmer's market and find somebody who is butchering cows or actually even raising chickens and ask them who's doing theirs, that type of thing, until you get a name that you can go visit. Now, cows, I'll be completely honest with you, we do not butcher our own cows because another reason why people don't butcher is because they don't feel that they can because of the size of the animal. Now, if we needed to butcher a cow, we could do it. <clears throat> we would have to get some help, but we could do it. We would have to borrow some equipment, but we could do it. Since we don't have the equipment, because of the size of the animal, we have chosen to have it go to what we call a custom butcher. And what that means is that they are not USDA inspected, um, and they don't have a USDA inspector on site at all times. If you fall into that, category for any of your animals that you're not going to do it yourself and you're going to go find a butcher or a slaughterhouse to do it for you. I've got some questions and some things that you need to ask and look for. One, you need to be able to call them and say, hey, can I come in and look at your place? If they won't meet with you for you to look at where the animals are being held, and where they're being slaughtered, find another place. Why? Because you need to see if their facility and the way they're doing it is humane and clean. Now, ask them, step by step, how do you process this animal? You know, where do they wait? How, what time do they need to come in? How much time is between dropping off and butchering? Can we bring them the night before because of scheduling? You need to ask him these questions. You act, also need to go see the facility. Most likely they're not gonna let you in there during the kill time, but they will let you in there and should be willing to meet you to show you the facilities on the inside. Another thing with going to an outside facility, not doing it yourself, is be very aware that the time frame from when you need your animal in from when you're calling could be up to two years. Now that's okay for a beef because if you have a calf hit the ground or you buy a calf and you know you're going to raise it and hopefully you're raising your cows on hay and grass and you're not giving them grain because that's our that's how we raise ours. We think it's healthier for the animal. We think it's tastier. You know, we're not putting fat and filler into an animal, which means we're not eating fat and filler either. That's just our opinion. But, <clears throat> so you get the calf and you know that a grass-fed calf is going to take between 26 and 30 months to grow out. You've got that time to call and say, do you have an opening? Do you have an opening? Do you have an opening? Now, if you're doing lambs or goats, they take about five to seven months is what 
you know, people say we butcher ours between seven and 12 months, but you don't have as long a period of time to be able to get your animal in. If you, the places that do chickens, they are not custom butchers or anything like that. It's normally somebody who's decided, I'm gonna butcher chickens. You need to go and find them and meet with them, talk to them, find out the cost and the time frame and the procedure, and they may just be a few weeks out. Or they may have a period of time that they do chickens. One lady I know that does chickens does them year round, Monday through Friday. You have to have everything to them by I believe nine o'clock in the morning and everything is picked up in the afternoon. One place that we know they only do it on Tuesdays and you have to get a reservation, which means you have to get a hold of them at least a week or two in ahead to figure out when you're gonna bring them in. Um, and I know of one other family that does them that they butcher at night, which I thought was interesting. But you have to have your, the animals to them by I believe six o'clock at night, and then you pick them all up by the next morning. And, but the last person, they actually process and put them in bags for you and cut them up if you want them. Most places with chickens, they're just harvesting, butchering, they're taking the guts out, they're rinsing them, they're washing them. If you want the heart and kidneys and liver, you tell them and they stick them back in the chicken and the necks, all good things for soup and nutrition for you. And then when you get them, you need to take them home. For us, we rinse them again in peroxide and we let them sit overnight for 24 hours to get the rigor mortis out of them. And then we process them ourselves. So there's different options depending on the animals, but you need to talk to whoever is going to be doing your harvesting and butchering, and you need to go visit their facility so that you can make a decision. Go with your gut. If your gut says, no, this isn't the place for me, find another place. Once you find a place, hold on to them. For instance, we have our cows that we're going to be butchering um, for the next two years. Now, the cows that are going in this year, we obviously know who they are, which steers are going in, and we know which steers are going in next year because they're running around the pasture. But for the following year, they haven't even hit the ground yet. Now, we do not have specific dates. We have a hold for whatever number we need for that third year and as soon as they hit the ground, we call in and we say, this is how many we have. So we're technically booking out almost three years. So you need to think about that. So if you are of the mindset where you think you, you could harvest and butcher your own animals, let me give you some tips on how you can create a relationship that is healthy for you and healthy for them. So you don't have these excuses of they're my friends. First of all, the animals that you're gonna eat do not make your friends. Now yes, with cows and such, on occasion there is a cow that needs to be butchered. Normally it's because something genetically we don't wanna pass on to somebody else. It becomes an older cow. And on a side note, all this garbage that you hear about how an animal that's over, I don't know, three years old, 30 months. It's just a tough animal and they're not any good. BS, BS, BS. We've eaten 10 year old cows. It has to do with how they're raised, how they're butchered and how the meat is cooked. So you don't have to just make ground beef out of a cow that's five or six or 10 years old. Um, I know people say it all the time. We've never had a problem. So anyhow, so back to not making them your friends. The way we do that here is chickens, we don't name them. Yes, my husband likes to name the roosters. We have two of them. They keep the girls in line, kind of. They alarm us when fox are around most of the time. And we don't eat them. We keep them literally until they pass away, they die on the homestead. They are the only animals that we keep that we do that with. Um, I do have a couple cows that are milk cows that 
may possibly end up being that way, but they can live for 25 to 30 years and they're only eight or nine years old. So in another 10 to 12 years, we'll know if they end up just dying here because that was their purpose in life. But for the most part, they're not. The animals are here to be raised for us to take care of them and give them a good life and them to give us nourishment for us to have a good life. So if we do name some of our animals, for instance, our cows, just the difference in for healthy relationship in your mindset, our cows that we milk, one my main milk cow, her name is Ruby. And I talk to her and I pet her and I treat her like she's part of the family because, well, she gives us milk. She also gives us babies that is our meat or we sell them off to other people. So Ruby is in that relationship of she is not going to be eaten. We don't have plans on eating her. On the other hand, our steers names, or sometimes we do have um, heifers that are going to be butchered. <clears throat> the theory that you can't eat a female cow is another BS. It's all meat. Is it better to sell your heifers? Mm, that's a yes and no. If you need the meat, then you need the meat. And you need to take care of yourself first before you sell it off for some money. Your money sounds good too, or to barter it for something you need, but your nutritional needs need to come first. So yes, we do sometimes, well, we'll have more heifer calves, heifers are females, then we will have steers and we will earmark certain heifer calves that are going to be basically treated as steers, which means we also keep them away from the bull. So they're not bred, they're just grown out for meat. They have names like Pounder, Steakum, Sirloin. So there's a difference. We do watch after them, we do take care of them. If something has to be brushed out of them because they got into a mess and we think it's a problem, we will take care of it. But we don't go out into the field and talk to them every day and treat them as part of the family. We treat them as our food. So that's one way, is you make a separation between yourself and the animal as that is food versus breeders. Because remember, your food is not your friend. You want to look at them as I take care of you so you have a good life, then you take care of me so that I have a good life. It's just a nice mindset, a mindset thing. So let's talk about what it takes to harvest the animal. And we're going to use a chicken as an example, just because more people, in my opinion, can grow chickens because of space than cows or goats or lambs. So with a chicken, the process goes from, and as I go through each one of these, think about that. Can I do that? And if I can't do that, what's my reasoning for not being able to do it? So we start with an egg that's been fertilized because the hens are running with the roosters, and we incubate them. Now, if you do not incubate your own eggs. I suggest you start learning about incubating. Save your money for an incubator because there's some really crazy, not so good things going on in the poultry industry with NPIP. Next week's podcast is going to be all about it on how they are vaccinating the breeders of the flock. And how do we know that's not coming down to us and our chicks? We don't. If you don't have the ability to incubate your eggs, you're going to buy chicks, but again, you're going to buy chicks from a place that isn't vaccinating the breeders. You're going to feed that chick. You're going to let it grow. If it's going to be a layer, then you're probably going to keep it for two years before you butcher it. And it's going to give you wonderful eggs. Now, if it's a hen or if it's a rooster, especially if it's a rooster, but if it's a hen that you've decided you're not keeping for laying eggs, this is meat, or you're raising them for meat, then you're gonna let them grow between five and seven months. Yes, there are chickens that grow in eight to 12 weeks. 
and 12 to 14 weeks. But I'd be very leery of these chickens, especially the eight, six to 10 weeks, I think they say on the, <clears throat> their crosses, we call them Franken chickens because they die before they can ever reproduce. My opinion, if an animal cannot go through life being that animal and being able to reproduce itself, something has gone wrong and man has intervened way too much and I would stay far, far away from him. That's just my two cents on that. Normally when you have just a male rooster, it takes him about five to seven months to grow to full size so that you can harvest them. So now you have the animal that's five to seven months, you've taken care of it for that length of time, and now you have to change it from a running rooster to a rooster that's in your freezer or canned. When you do it, you need to do it very mindfully, very prayerfully, very quickly. We use a cone system, and we use a very, very sharp, thin knife, so it's one cut, they're gone. And then with a chicken, you have to bleed them out. That's our main rooster you're hearing. He's not going anywhere. And then they stay in the cones. And then they need to be gutted. And then soaked 24 hours and then processed. So if you say, okay, well, I can, I can raise that animal. Good, you're off to a good start. And you say, yeah, I could probably harvest that animal, but I'm not sure I could gut it, wear a glove, and you don't feel it. If you really don't think you can gut it, find someone around that can do it with you, or find someone that can do the whole thing for you. And then finally, it's putting that animal into the freezer or into your canning so that you have it for future use. So this is just something I want you to think about. You know, if you're gonna to go to a butcher, remember those questions. Remember to go look at it. If you're gonna do it yourself and you've never done it, my suggestion is quit watching YouTube videos on how to do it. I mean, it's good to get an idea. Go find somebody who's doing it and have them help you do it or you go help them do it so that you learn because it needs to be a hands-on thing when you're learning to butcher and process animals. You know, what people are doing on YouTube channels, yeah, they're pretty accurate some of the time. Um, but what I find is everything isn't always honky-dory unless they're showing you a chicken running off or something weird happening because weird things do happen. Plus, Watching and watching and watching is not doing. Even if you don't have any chickens, let's say, but in the next year or so you want to get some, or rabbits, go and butcher some with somebody who's already doing it. It will make you decide right then and there, is this an animal I want to raise for food? Yes or no? Is this an animal I want to harvest and process for food? Yes or no? And you'll be able to make a plan on how you're going to get your meat and it's gonna be clean. But I want you to think about it. Remember, homesteading is a piece of mind, not a piece of land. And whoever controls your food controls you. So control your own food and gain food freedom. Don't forget to go to our website at foodplusfreedom.com, sign up. For our updates, read our articles, comment in social media, and let's have a conversation how we can all have better food freedom and create a community wherever we are. Grow food, eat local, gain freedom. This is Janet. We'll talk to you next week. Bye.